Hi guys, the Financial Times did a report into the problems of Brexit and how some of the issues can be resolved. Unfortunately, they dropped the ball somewhat by allowing certain pro-Brexit arguments to go unchallenged. But as the public since the referendum have begun to realise that being outside the European Union has not benefited Britain at all, the question has to be, what should a future government do to help both importers and exporters? In this part of the report, a number of experts explained ways of improving things. The key word being alignment. If you're a small business importing, there's a real concern that your business partners in the EU will just basically think it's not worth the effort and go and sell their goods elsewhere. If you're a large business, that's less of a concern. But what you are concerned about is when your lorries are coming over the border, if you're stuck behind someone who hasn't got the right paperwork, if the new import regulations aren't working smoothly and there are delays at the border, it will add time, costs, and that will certainly see upward pressure on inflation. The whole point about Brexit was taking back control. Conservative Brexiteers would differ to where perhaps Labour Brexiteers were. The whole point is that once you've left the EU, then it's up to the British people to elect a government that reflects their own priorities. Oh my goodness. How are you taking back control if you're a rule taker? The UK used to be a rule maker. It used to be there at the table in Brussels writing the rules. Now it's following the rules and it has no influence over those rules. That government can then implement the Brexit vision, if you like, that it wants. Rejoining the single market and the customs union are, I would say, off the agenda at the moment. But that doesn't mean we can't improve things. If you take a divorce analogy, the two partners have stopped throwing plates at each other and are now talking in a slightly cold way about sorting out some of the stuff that had to be resolved. And Rishi Sunak, to his credit, has addressed the Northern Ireland trading dispute was sorted out. The Horizon Science Programme, which Britain has now been readmitted to as well. The government junked the proposal to have a bonfire of EU regulation with all the rules automatically expiring, something which was driving business crazy because of the uncertainty that was going to arise. There are pragmatic, sort of more flexible things we can put in place. The first thing you could do is start to align in various key sectors of the economy that are important for our goods manufacturers. Now, the important thing to remember is that alignment doesn't get you access. Even if you have the same rules, you still have to show up at the border with a piece of paper that shows you followed the rules. And that is cost and friction. That makes it harder to put the UK in your supply chain if you're an EU business. But nonetheless, you could do that alignment unilaterally just on the UK side, and that would make it easier for business. I think for the Conservatives, it's very difficult to say that the UK would just remain aligned with uh, evolving rules that are drawn up by the EU. I think for Labour, there is a sense, talking at least to front benches privately, that they want to strip out the ideology from um, some of these issues. They want to make pragmatic choices about when to diverge and when to remain uh, aligned. OK, I don't understand what pragmatic ways it would be to to diverge on from EU standards. But anyway, the key word here, of course, as I said at the beginning, was alignment. Alignment will be the first step towards rejoining the European Union and the single market. And why is it so important? It's because if you align to EU standards, you tell businesses, this is what you need to do. These are the standards you need to respect. And of course, it, it's not going to stop the friction completely at the border, but it will make it easier for businesses because if businesses are being told you need to diverge from eu standards but still sell into the biggest market on your doorstep the eu single market then it's it's a, it's a massive problem for businesses so alignment makes perfect sense this is the first step it makes it easier for businesses because they know okay these are the standards we need to follow and then when the uk eventually rejoins the european union and eventually the single market that adjustment has already taken place. Now, we, we've seen businesses respond to Brexiteers by saying, look, if you tear up all these rules and regulations, it's going to be extremely difficult for us to sell into the single market. And remember, business countries sell to their closest market. The UK's biggest market on its doorstep, of course, is the European single market. Brexiteers have not come up with viable alternatives. They've talked about CPTPP, they've talked about the US, they've talked about Asia, but the real market, of course, is on the doorstep. And if you create a divergence, if you diverge from the EU standards, then businesses are going to see bigger costs. 
And eventually, if you have to realign, that's an extra cost as well. So at the moment, most businesses are, most industry in Britain is aligned. The divergence hasn't really happened yet. But it, it's important that the Tory government is removed from power so that a pragmatic government, when it comes to Brexit, is put in place and they say, look, businesses, we're going to align with EU standards and we're going to make it easier for you to export into the single market. Now, remember, alignment doesn't get you access, as was pointed out, and you're not there at the decision-making table making the decisions. You're following the rules. So when the EU introduces a new regulation, a new standard, you have to adjust to that. Now, I think that's what the Labour government are going to do. It's probably going to be pretty low-key, because they don't want to upset voters, but that's what's going to happen. A new standard will be introduced by the European Union and the UK will align to that. Because if they don't, it's once again extra paperwork and extra cost selling into that market. Let me know in the comment section, guys, what you think. As always, your comments are greatly appreciated. Thanks a lot.